So, you want to move to Indiana, but your name's not Joan, so it wouldn't be authentic. Hey guys, I'm about to spike. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to do this cool shadow catcher thing where you can kind of have transparent shadows on things. So, you can, you can take a shadow and then only have that, like, appear on your surface, which is super, super handy for if you're doing something where you need a transparent background, but you want to maintain the shadow. So I'll explain what I mean here. So let's go ahead. And the first thing I'm going to do is just for today's video, I'm going to get rid of the camera because we don't need it right now. But obviously, if you are rendering something, you use a camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift A. And I'm going to search for a plane and hit S to scale this up. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our cube and then hit G, Z just to move it up a little bit like that. Just so it's like, you know, not through the bottom of the, um, the plane. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, select our plane and then open up the, uh, the, the, the materials and the section, this section up here so we can uh, swap this up to the top left to the shader editor so we can play around with uh, a few of the material settings and the shader settings here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit this little drop down and select material. Um, now, with this selected, as you can see, this is also on our cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove that from the cube because we don't need a material on the cube. We're just going to use this on the plane here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the principal BSDF shader. I'm going to add in a few more, uh, a few more nodes here. So uh, first things first, um, we're going to hit Shift A and search. Um, the first thing we're going to search for is a diffuse shader. I'm going to put that right there. Boom! There we go. We're feeling great. After this, we can get a slice of pizza. This is going to be amazing. Um, hit Shift A and we're going to search for a shader. Oh, shader to RGB. Right there so shader rgb put that right there boom there we go lovely 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 um hit shift a and we're gonna search for a color ramp node as well put that right there hook that up uh, with the uh with the color into the factor there we go um and then we need two more so the two more the last two is gonna be a shift a search mix shader put that right there and the last one's gonna be a transparent shader there we go so shift a to add that one as well now we're gonna hook all those up we're gonna put the uh transparent into the bottom of the mix shader we're gonna put the color ramp into the factor of the mix shader not the shader the factor of the mix shader there we go now we're gonna hook that up, bad boy up into the surface and then boom we're ready to go now our mom can finally be proud of us this is amazing let's get it um, now, after that, we're going to go, go, go ahead and go on over to uh, our main uh, section over here and change this just to rendered viewport sh shading so we can see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to select our, uh, our lamp and then turn this to a sun lamp. And as you can see, everything's kind of black right now. And it's like, okay, well, why is everything black? What's going on? What's, what's, what's crack a lacking right now? What's, what's, what's going on? Um, but that's okay. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Go back to our plane. Um, and turn this from linear to constant, and then we're just going to drag this white, this white line back a little bit like that. You know what I mean? All right. Now, so there's a, a few more things you need to do here. So the few things are super, super simple. Let's go to the main render tab here and scroll on down to film, and then check transparent. Now you can see the background's transparent, but you can see the the plane is just still solid black, and it's not really giving us any shadows. It kind of looks like one all big shadow. You know what I mean? Um, Where's Sonic? We need him. But we're going to go down to the, uh, we're going to select with the, with the plane selected. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and go down to the material tab here. And as you can see, um, if we scroll on down here, there's a few settings that we need to change. So the first one we need to do is we need to check back face culling for camera, which gets rid of the bottom of the, which gets rid of the, of the bottom of the plane. So as you can see, when we go down here, you can see that this, uh, it's completely gone. But if it's, if we uncheck it, then boom, you see, it's like. Because there's, there's technically two sides of the plane, so the top face and the bottom face. So we want to make sure we get rid of the back face calling so we can have the entire thing be completely transparent. And then to make this fully transparent, we're going to go ahead and change the render method from dithered to blended. And as you can see, as soon as we do that, boom, we have that glorious, glorious real-time shadow that will now be uh, transferred onto the plane. But the plane is completely transparent itself. So if you needed this to to put this on you know if you're doing vfx and you want to put a cube on the ground but you needed the shadow this is what you would do so it looks really cool and as you can see like i said just to show you if i put suzanne behind this you you can see that we can indeed see suzanne but the light doesn't work so we need to actually add a light down here as well because the light doesn't go through the plane so we need to go ahead and do that and then as you can see beautiful now um suzanne is fully able to be visible underneath 
the uh, underneath the shadow, which would be really cool for glass, by the way, if you were doing like glass or like ice or something. But yeah, if you want to change the type of lamp you're using from sun to point or to spot or whatever else, um, if you just click on over, you can see that it has a, like a weird kind of like a black edge to it. Um, and the way to get rid of this is actually because the scene is actually very large and we need to just kind of shrink it down a little bit. So I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go through a couple of the settings here. So let's go ahead and say we want to use a point lamp, right? Let's go ahead and swap the point lamp. Um, now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and actually grab our cube and our plane by holding down control to select both of those and then hitting S on our keyboard to scale this bad boy down. As you can see, it's just way too big right now. And now, after we've done that, we can change uh, a little bit of settings here. We can change the custom distance up and down here. We can change this to maybe about 100, just so if it is, uh, if there's any edges still, they'll all go away. So if we scale the plane back up, you can see kind of what's going on here. But if we take a look at this, this is actually not as small as you think it is because it's w when we had the cube super massive, it was way big. So a lot of the time, scale in your blender scenes really kind of matter. And people don't talk about this enough, but um, things can kind of get way too big or way too small super quickly. So just keep in mind what scale everything's at. Um, like for instance, right now, our our, our cube itself is uh, 0.3 meters in all directions. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and take a look at the other uh, lights now. You can see we have a spotlight, which also, again, once again, um, we go ahead and change the radius to make this to make the shadow a little bit softer there. You see, a little bit softer, and then we can change the distance for the uh, custom distance. But as you can see, it doesn't really change too much with this. So let's go ahead and once again, if we take a look at this, we can scale it down again. But the problem is when you scale things down like this, it kind of gets kind of gets a little a little crazy. So my recommendation, if you do want to use a softer lamp, kind of just maybe situate it so that it doesn't really touch the plane too off too much. So you can kind of just like move that move this plane around. Sorry, move the uh, the 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 uh, uh, spotlight around a little bit and maybe boost the size up um, and then kind of move it to a degree where it's not really giving you too many problems there but the uh, the best one to use is of course like I said the um, the uh, the sun lamp for this exact reason so this is a, a, a super common issue with this but like I said to get around it the super super easy thing is just to scale around kind of move it around and Every single different light has different settings you need to use. So obviously the area and the point lamp kind of work the same way, but the spotlight is kind of uh, kind of uh, a little glitchy here. So we can just kind of move this thing around until we get a nice uh, a nice uh, a nice um, uh, scene with it. But as you can see, the custom distance as well, we can change that and put it up. But it doesn't really do too much for the spot, like I said. So the best bet, your best bet is going to be uh, point oh, let me move that here. point area and of course sun. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, 